Welcome everyone to this video which is all about photographing birds in flight with a mirrorless camera. Now it's aimed at beginners but I think if you're more of an intermediate photographer or if you're using a DSLR you'll still find some useful tips. Now obviously one of the most important things is the autofocus here in terms of the autofocus mode and the autofocus area. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got your camera set to AFC to continuous autofocus. If you've got Canon it will be called Servo. Now this is the autofocus option that allows you uh, to stay focused on the bird. It will keep the bird in focus as it flies around as long as you can track it reasonably well. Now you might have some kind of tracking option on your camera and this is where the camera actually locks onto the bird and stay locks on and follows it around the frame. It's quite an amazing piece of technology. Uh, this might be called uh, bird detection, AF, animal detection, 3D tracking, uh, animal eye focus, all pretty much the same thing. Now on my camera, on my Canon R6, I have the eye focus set to the animal option. Now if you don't have that option, it means that you're going to have to keep the focus points on the bird, you're going to have to keep up with it yourself, and here you're going to have to look at the different options for focus points and focus area, sometimes called focus zone. Now there's so many different options with different camera systems, uh, but they all work pretty similar in that you can have smaller areas and wider areas to choose from. Now I generally say I wouldn't pick the widest area because a lot of the time it can pick up on the surrounding background and things like that. Uh, so I generally advise working with kind of like an expanded focus point rather than just one. So if you've got an option of say a single focus point with four around it, maybe eight around it, just to aid it, that can work really, really well for a lot of flight photography. Now, in situations where you've got more of a cluttered background or where the bird is quite small in the frame, then I'd suggest you're probably better just using one single focus point. Uh, it tends to be more specific and less likely to stick on the background. So should you simply hand hold when you're shooting? Should you use a tripod? Well, to some extent, it is gonna depend on personal preference, but also it's gonna depend on the lens that you're using. Now, there's so many different types of lenses out there. If you've got quite a small light lens, then I'd suggest you're probably better hand holding. And this is the preference for me. I feel I could just get such better range of move, movement and flexibility. I can track the bird better. If you've got a really big heavy lens uh, then you probably want to mount that on a tripod in which case I suggest a gimbal head or a fluid head and then you've also got a monopod which is kind of an option in between. Now it's really important to make sure that you're on continuous shooting mode, your rapid frame rate where the camera takes lots of pictures per second and there's a few reasons for this but it's largely to do with percentages of success. With birds in flight, you need to take a lot of pictures to get a few good ones. Uh, you'll have the light hitting the bird differently, maybe different wing positions. So the more pictures you can take, the better. Now with your camera, you might just have electronic shutter or you might have mechanical and electronic shutter. If you have the mechanical option on your camera, then I suggest you go for one of the highest frame rates. If you're new to birds in flight photography, I'd say probably pick the highest frame rate that you can with that mechanical shutter. Now, if you're using electronic shutter, this is where the camera can often take 20, maybe 30 frames per second. The advantage of the electronic shutter is that you just get so many more frames per second, you can record more of the action. Uh, the downside is that sometimes you can just take too many pictures and you don't always need that. So that's something for you to consider. Now, something that you can get with mirrorless cameras is kind of like a, a blackout or a lag with your high speed shooting and it kind of looks a bit choppy, maybe it kind of stutters, looks like it's kind of stuttering in between frames. Now this is just something to bear in mind because obviously it can affect the shooting experience. It's going to be different on all mirrorless cameras depending on what you've got. Uh, now on my camera for example, the R6, if I use this with my older 400mm lens uh, then I do definitely get that when I'm shooting on mechanical shutter. So now we come to exposure 
year, which I always think is, is the trickiest part of photographing birds in flight. And there is no one fits all option here. It just depends on a lot of things and your experience. But first we're gonna look at the settings that you need. So the general settings you need for photographing birds in flight. You do need to have a fairly fast shutter speed. This is simply to stop the motion, to freeze the movement. Uh, if you use a shutter speed that's too slow, then it's simply gonna come out too blurred. Now in terms of the aperture, I'd keep this fairly wide. That's a small F number. That's gonna to help to blur the background, but it's also gonna to help to let in more light, which makes things easier. And the ISO is going to vary. So for the shutter speed, I would aim as a general guide for about 1250th of a second, something like that. Uh, your aperture pretty wide, close to the widest aperture your lens can do, uh, but commonly between f4 and f8 is probably a good area to aim for. Now, what about the best exposure mode to achieve these settings? What should we use? Well, there is shutter priority, uh, sometimes called TV. You can potentially use this. You just select the fast shutter speed that you want and then the camera will look after the exposure. The only problem with this sometimes is if the light levels are too low, you might find the camera starts flashing at you because it can't do what you want. Uh, but if you're shooting on a nice bright sunny day like today, then it should be okay. If you have a really good understanding of exposure, then you could do everything manually, select your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO, and that can work really, really well for birds in flight. But if this is very new to you, then that might be a bit too much. Uh, in which case, I definitely suggest that you try aperture priority. Now this is often A or AV, and what you do here is select the widest aperture that you can on your lens, or probably close to the widest aperture, and then just keep a check on your shutter speed. Make sure that your shutter speed is reasonably fast, like we talked about earlier. And this is where the ISO can come in as well. So on a very bright, sunny day, like it is now when the clouds go away, um, on a bright, sunny day, you maybe set ISO 200 to 400, should give you a fast enough shutter speed. On a very overcast day, then you might need to set the ISO more like 800 to 1600, possibly even faster. And the other option is to use automatic ISO. Uh, so that can make your life easier because you don't even have to think about that. The camera can do that bit itself. And you should find on most cameras, you can use automatic ISO on all the exposure mode I just mentioned. Now, getting the correct exposure for birds in flight can often be really tricky, but with the mirrorless camera, you should be able to see a live exposure through the viewfinder, uh, in some cases, a histogram as well. So that means you can see exactly what you're getting and any changes that you make. Now, with my older DSLR, DSLR camera, the Canon 1DX, I'd have to take the shot and then look on the back of the camera, maybe use a histogram uh, to see if I needed to make any changes and then shoot again, or I'd have to use really good judgment at the time to get it right. Now, personally, I like to use evaluative metering and I can see through the viewfinder if I need to make adjustments, if it's too dark or too light, I can make those changes and see them in real time. And I suggest for a lot of beginners that evaluative or matrix metering, there's a few other names as well, but that's probably the better metering option to use. One of the biggest problems of photographing birds in flight is where you're shooting up against the sky and the images come out too dark. It's a very common problem. And this often happens when the light is poorer or you're shooting against a really cloudy sky. Now in this situation, you need to overexpose from what the camera's telling you to some extent. And to do this, uh, might be different ways you can do it depending on your camera. It might be a simple wheel on the back which works really well, or it might be a plus minus button which you hold down and then a dial that you need to move. So just adding some overexposure will help to get a better result. Now there's so many types of light, so much variation in light. I did make a video on this, I'll put it at the end of this one. Uh, but as a general rule, to keep it simple, I'd say if it's a very, very cloudy sky, then you want to overexpose by at least plus one. Uh, if it's a deep, nice deep blue sky, then I would just leave the exposure in the middle and you should find it's fairly accurate. Now there's probably some people thinking, should you use shutter button focus or back button focus for birds in flight? Personally, I don't think it really matters. I think it's whichever one feels more comfortable for you, that works best for you. 
Now in either way you're going to have to keep your finger or your thumb pressed on a button uh, to keep the focus engaged as you track the bird in flight. Now back button focus can be useful to disengage the focus from the shutter but it's certainly not essential. Now in terms of back button focus I would certainly look at how big the camera is because that can make it more difficult if it's a really big camera I think and even how big your hands are if you've got really small hands and that might, might be a bit more difficult for back button focus but either way just figure out what works for you. Now what about image stabilisation in the lens? Is this really necessary? Uh, it might be called VR, OIS or different names, it's pretty much all the same thing. Now personally I think with birds in flight photography because you're often at high shutter speeds over a thousandth of a second, maybe two thousandths of a second, uh, I don't think it makes any huge difference uh, in terms of sharpness. Now your image stabilisation will help you take uh, sharper pictures at slower shutter speeds if you're handheld, but it doesn't freeze movement, so I don't think it has too much effect for birds in flight. However, having said that, it can stabilize the viewfinder, which can be useful for a shooting experience. One of the downsides as well is it potentially drains more battery, so there might be situations where it's actually better to switch it off. I definitely think one of the most difficult things is getting the correct exposure for birds in flight, and if you wanna learn more about how to shoot birds against the sky, and check out this video here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.